Hello to all of you and hello to you. Welcome to this Wednesday evening service at in the Moss Room at the Paul Motter Gallery out on the back patio here. And welcome to all of you. Um, I assume that you have a bulletin. And our liturgy begins on the front page. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So my friends, uh, we have beautiful scripture as always, and I come here straight from Bible study. Um, because it's Wednesday, we're not going to read all of the scripture. I'm going to read um, our passage from Deuteronomy and the stunningly beautiful psalm and then the gospel. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, and Naphtali, Tali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negeb, and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants in his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now uh, I will read um, our psalm, which are portions of Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of the earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. 
prosper our handiwork. And now please stand for the gospel. <coughs> this is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. So this is, uh, we've, we've just been through a long period of time that is very rich in scripture, and today is no exception. This gospel passage is one of um, my favorite. It's in uh, all three of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. There are variations on who is testing Jesus. And I will say, if I had my druthers when I was putting the lectionary text together, I would have lopped off the entire half of the, the last half of this gospel passage where uh, Jesus asked the Pharisees about David. But the beginning of it is really stunning. And it says an awfully lot about the nature of love. In Western culture, we have a tendency to think about love as a feeling, right? It's something that I have. It's a noun. And I know when I feel love, and it's in my heart, and it's wonderful, right? But you also know that, we can, that love is used as a verb, right? To love something. I love Linda. I love Mary Martha. I love you all. And because I love you, that means my actions um, are a particular way, right? It influences my actions. In this passage, what we have in Jesus' very, very beautiful teaching is really nothing new. He's quoting scripture. He's quoting first the book of Deuteronomy, and then he's quoting from Le uh, Leviticus. So in the, the, he's quoting from the law. So this question, um, what is the greatest, what law is the greatest? And he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So what he's talking about is three different types of love here. With all your heart, that's easy to think about, like, that's sort of a romantic love. It's a feeling love, and it's a great love, but it's not all there is. There's also loving God with all our soul. And when I think about loving God with all our soul, what is soul love? Soul is kind of, I think, the, the direction we move our life and beyond life, right? When you think about soul food, it's kind of the food that nourishes you bodily and on multiple levels, right? It's not just, it's not just a, a nutritional value, right? So your soul is kind of the direction that we live our life, and also the direction that we position ourselves in for afterlife. And then to love the Lord with all our mind up here. You know, it's not enough to say, I believe in the creeds. We have to um, it's good to believe the creeds. It's good to understand the creeds. It's good to do theology. I love theology. I love getting in there, but it's not enough. The difference between theology and philosophy is that 
philosophy is an, is an intellectual discipline all into itself. Theology means nothing if it cannot be related to by a three-year-old. Theology has to have a life of its own that is completely separate from understanding. That's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. And then the second commandment is like the first commandment. Loving God is like loving your neighbor. Something that uh, at first John says, how can I love my how can I love God if I do not love my neighbor? If I how can I love God whom I don't see if I cannot love my neighbor whom I do see? And then there's a third component to it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So there's this whole being in here, in this notion of love. And it's never, it cannot be separated from loving God if I don't love you. And I don't also love myself. So I also want to talk a little bit about our passage from Deuteronomy. We've left ahead. So, you know, we've had 10 weeks of Moses. 10 weeks. This is the 10th week, guys. We're done with Moses now. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long journey. It's felt kind of like 40 years, but it's only been 10 weeks. But there's been this, this journey, of course, from slavery to freedom. And here's Moses. He's arrived. It's the eve of the children of God, the people of Israel, setting foot in the promised land. But Moses isn't going to be among them. There's, this is a, a tough moment. It's a, it's a sadness that Moses is going to die on the eve of entering the promised land. Now, when I hear this passage, I think of another sermon that you all have heard. I have been to the mountaintop. I have seen the promised land. Does anyone know where that, what that sermon is? I have been to the mountaintop. I have seen the promised land. This is the sermon that Martin Luther King Jr. preached the night before he was killed. And of course, he is referring to this moment with Moses. And when I think about this passage and Moses' long journey, his huge effort of living day to day with um, the negotiations with Pharaoh, with leading the Egyptian, leading the, the Israelites out of Egypt through all of their wilderness wandering and getting to this point, there is such a sacrifice there, but there's a whole being, there's a living out in every step he takes of living out the love of God. It's not fun for Moses. He complains a lot. The people complain a lot. It is sacrificial. But there is a real goal to his movement. And that goal is a greater expression of love. You know, I've said repeatedly that what this journey from slavery to freedom is about is two things. One is the Israelites themselves coming to terms with the fact that God loves them. Remember, they ask over and over again, is the Lord with us or not? Is the Lord with us or not? Moses, last week, Lord, show me your face. And if you're not going to go with us, I don't want to take another step. I'm not going from here if you're not going with us. There's this having to learn about God's love of God's people. But then the second part of their freedom is learning that they're free to love God. 
you know, and that in that space of freedom, this love exists. And it cannot be separated from the actions, the living, the verb of loving one another. So that's where we are today. If we think about love as a noun, it's easy to slip into thinking that love is a feeling. So we have to remember that God calls us, Jesus calls us to love as a verb. It's an action. And uh, it's how we live our lives and it's about the path that we take in life. It's about passing the baton, you know, running the race well passing the baton, whether we see it or not, whether we, whether we move into the promised land or not, it's about living in a way that conveys love now. So, thanks be to God. Yes. All right, my friends, uh, we have the prayers of the people now. Please stand. And as you know, in this Wednesday service, we're a little more free flow with the prayers of the people. I ask if you feel moved by the Holy Spirit, please interject in any of these, um, in any of our petitions. Gracious God, we pray for your church everywhere. We pray for all the manifestations of the presence of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in this world, both within us as we are a part of it, and also in the world around us. Lord, I pray for our church family. I pray for our diocese. I pray for Christians throughout the world that like Moses, we may walk the path that you set out for us and lead our sisters and brothers to know the freedom and the blessing and the glory of your love in the world all around us. Lord, we pray for this nation, especially as we prepare for an election. Lord, I pray that you teach us the blessing of loving one another as we wish to be loved, to showing one another the respect, the kindness, that we wish to be shown. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you meet us in our anxiety and that you inspire all elected officials, both in this country and throughout the world, to act for the common good and to prize the ways of justice and peace. Lord, we pray for the welfare of the world. We pray for people throughout the world who are ill. We pray for governments throughout the world. And we pray that the bonds of the love that you have for each and every one of us as your children will extend beyond all national borders. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all of those who are living with fear and loss in these red flag days. Lord, be with those who have been evacuated, those who have lost homes. Be with firefighters everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift before you all those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for the Bruno family. We pray for Catalina, for Joyce and the Caparata family. We pray for Aiden, Michael, David, Ruth, Deborah, Robin, Marjorie, Patricia, Anne, Sherry, Tammy, Maria, Donna, Suzanne, Richard, Leah, Alice, Juanice, Jim, Alicia, Christine, Mark, JP, Barbara, Cecilia, Frank, 
Tony, Colleen, and others we now name, either silently or aloud. James, Brittany, Kylan. Fran. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have died. We pray especially for Dolores Walker and others we now name. Andrew, Melissa. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have, have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you all. And peace be with you. I'm sorry. Peace be with you all. Peace, peace. <laughs> you may be seated. Taking a quick look at the announcements, um, we got confirmation today that Sunday, 9 a.m., we will be back at Barn Diva. This upcoming Sunday, the 25th, and also November 1st. And I also want to um, say that on November 1st, it's All Saints Day, and we have invited the Reverend Marvin Bowers to preach and preside at, um, at our service at Barn Diva. Um, he and Bonnie are moving to L.A., and they'll be leaving Healdsburg, and so we wanted to be sure to have them join us uh, at some point before they go. And that's the perfect place and time to do it because it can be in person versus online. Um, he's not 100% sure he's going to be able to come because all the details there, it's still looking for a house in L.A., and if they have to fly down there and make arrangements really quickly, but he's pretty certain that he'll be with us. Um, let's see, all these... Also daylight saving time now. I know, we get an extra day. Uh, hour. hour, whoops, <laughs> not an extra day. <laughs> see, I, I get very just mixed like up. Just like you lost it. I know, <laughs> just like I lost it. An extra day. We get an extra hour because normally we have church at 10, but, uh, but we have to do it at 9 because of the oh, schedule at Barn Diva, so it'll okay. feel like 10, so that's yeah. good. That'll be good. It will be good indeed. Um... Let's see. Oh, Donna Garvey has a new phone number, a designated line, and her number's right here if you want to give her a buzz. Um, so you can see the other announcements there. The boutique is coming. Woo! Tomorrow there's a meeting about it, so stay tuned for that. Many, many, many thanks to Paul for letting us be in this absolutely gorgeous space. Thank you, Paul. Our gratitude continues. Um... Our birthdays for this week. We have a lot of birthdays this week. Oh my goodness. Peter Stafford, Ulisa Madrano, Debbie Dormeyer, Terry Hubble, Ava Campbell, Zachary Taylor, and Daisy Damsky. Oh my gosh, look at all these birthdays. Uh, let us say our birthday blessing for all of them. Watch over your children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Paul and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the body and the blood of Christ. Behold what you are and become what you receive.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Bye, everyone.